is a restriction in impose, can impose on states on about Neumann algebra. That's so heavily <coughs> imposed in ordinary quantum mechanics that the position is unremarked. So uh, the topic of this talk is should be imposed. The plan is first I'll talk about the nature of the restriction and the condition of the sense. Uh, next I'll parade some temptations to resist imposing the restriction in the form of states that aren't normal that might do us some good. Uh, and then I'll consider uh, uh, I'm not gonna, I should make this clear at the outset. I'm not going to lobby for a particular answer to the question, should we be normal or not, uh, so much as catalog the kind of considerations different obvious not going to bear. We're looking towards appreciating the variety of scope of those considerations. But I'm going to consider four different reasons one might give for imposing the uh, requirement of normality. Uh, two of them, maybe one, two more. And then I'll be asked. Uh, <laughs> so, a state omega on the point that I'm going to help and um, is a map from n to the complex numbers when you think of the image of the map for the self-measuring elements and expectation values. Uh, that satisfies certain sanity conditions. It's linear, it takes positive operators, non-negative expectation values. It's normed. That is, it takes the identity operator, which right then corresponds to a topology to the value value one. Uh, so those are all pretty straightforward and same. Um, a state out of a normal algebra is normal if it satisfies this additional condition, which is well, that's more or less a countable identity condition. It's normal if for any countable set of pairwise and factional projection operators in the algebra, uh, the state maps the sum of those projection operators to the same number of get my summit when it matches the operators to the image. So normal states are kind of like that. You're probably familiar with them as the states described by the reasons here. That's the operators of the one space in the dimension to the um, Conflict, the nature, the virtue of normality. One question you might ask looking at this condition is, what's that? What is the difference itself? What's that? How do we make sense of that? And uh, raising that question gives me an excuse to reflect on uh, the prescience of Plato, um, who in the sophist remarked, all discourse owes its existence to the interweaving of forms. Uh, the Greek word for interweaving there is simplicate, the same root as the root of the word simplicate, so if you read it in the right mood, <laughs> all discourse owes its existence to simplicate forms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here's a recipe for quantum physics discourse. It's not the only one. But it's fun. Um, you start by finding operators all hands are going to agree are physically significant operators on a quantum physics. These might be operators that satisfy canonical commutation relations, canonical anti commutation relations, the physical relations between observables that are constituent of the kind of physics. But you don't want to stop there. You want to make some discourse by doing some more interweaving of forms. Uh, so one thing you might do with this seed set of operators is start forming products and linear combinations. For instance, building Hamiltonian observable uh, positions. You might not even want to stop there. Uh, you might uh, say, what? Having built a Hamiltonian observable that exponentiated to obtain a unitary operator, and uh, that might entail understanding that unitary operator in terms of a limit of a sequence of operators that you're already obtained in terms of linear combinations of products. So, in your project of interweaving forms of the service of creating a physical theory, uh, the question's going to come up. Which sequences of operators I'm already committed to is being physically probative? Uh, uh, have limits of sequences to approach. Um, but on what you're doing, when you start taking linear combinations and adding products and adding limit points, is building an algebra. Um, when you feel the need to add limit points, you have to confront the question which sequences can go to which sequences have limits. Um, and Hilbert spaces make available, I hope that's not too faint to see, a number of different criteria for when sequences convert, which sequences have limits. Um, one criterion, this is probably going to be familiar with most of you, one criterion is supported by the norm operator topology. Which I've written down. I'm not going to go through the details and tell you what the criteria are. One criteria of convergence is supported by the norm operator 
technology is an operator's conversion. These conditions are satisfied. There's uh, Mayor's nest of other criteria of, of, of convergence. Uh, one is that afforded by the weak operator topology, uh, which is a, using a whole set of vectors to define one norm, and uses each pair of vectors to define the semi norm and define convergence in terms of the behavior of that set. So, I, um, so there's these separate criteria of convergence. The point is, some criteria of convergence are more permissive than others. Some criteria of convergence make it easier for sequences to converge than others. Um, again, I'm just going to say what's important in the So, a kind of the standard example of a sequence that converges in the weak operator topology, but not the norm operator topology. Uh, is a sequence of partial sums over a countable complete orthonormal set of projection operators. That sequence of partial sums doesn't converge in your uh, in a very faint uh, <laughs> thing I added. Uh, there's the argument that it doesn't. Uh, but that sequence does converge in the weak operator topology to the identity operator uh, in the first place for which the projection operators are. So, we're interweaving forms, we're building an algebra, we want to do physics. Uh, we realize we want to add limit points, we make a decision how are we going to define limit points, what to find here in this up to find limit points. If we use this stringent um, norm topology according to which the complete orthonormal set of projection operators, their partial sums, it's kind of multiples and converge, we get a C star algebra. C star algebra is an algebra. Uh, if we use the more permissive criteria of convergence supported by the weak operator problem, we get the kind of things we've been talking about. I've been talking about the kind of things for which normality is a criteria of acceptability on states that make sense. A lot more than algebra. Uh, so, remember the question that started this digression. The statement of the requirement of countable additivity included this thing, this countable sum of orthogonal projection operators. How are we going to understand that? We're going to understand that in terms of the von Neumann algebra has a strong limit uh, the sequence of partial sums. Uh, and uh, there's going to be no impediment to imposing the requirement of countable additivity because the closure properties of the von Neumann algebra ensure that if the projection operators you're summing over are in the algebra, so too will be the thing that's their sum.
portfolio relations and what I have these trends acting on a cyclical Hilbert space spanned by the basis vector I've drawn up here. It's an eigenvector of spin z for each site uh, pointing up. And uh, the collection of other basis vectors differing from this basis vector in my And it's all works. Represent the canonical and cavitation relations. <coughs> So this is our long term analogy. Uh, and now I'm going to exhibit a state that you might think is a physically relevant state, but a very nice state, the state you shouldn't shun. That's not a normal state on this long term analogy. Um, there's probably more direct and elegant exhibitions, but um, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, in this long term analogy, what I'm calling M plus, uh, and read some forms to define and the whole magnitude that is an average over n sites of their spins in the z direction. Um, so we're going to be interested in this. For instance, we can start drawing phase diagrams of the ferromagnet. That was how they look like phase diagrams of totally different systems. Um, so we define the average spin that way. Uh, and it might be plausible if you think about the basis vectors in the space and how they're always going to have infinitely more spins in the ups than spins in the downs, that uh, in the limit as n goes to infinity is average uh, of uh, the z component of the spin. Uh, turns out to be the identity map. It takes value one, expectation value one in every, every state in the space. Uh, and in fact, uh, this spin I defined here as I know it converges ultra weakly to the identity map. Ultra weak continuity is defined in each of the states. Uh, so in order to one way to show that a state's not normal was to show that, uh, uh, yeah, to show that even though n n converges to the identity as n goes to infinity, the expectation values it assigns and n doesn't convert, don't converge to one. So here's such a state. Um, it's just the state that's the flat, flipped over version of the seed state for my open space, the state that assigns every spin in the lattice spins in the uh, uh, the spin z guys in the algebra and that's the minus one. It's going to follow that, that for each m, the average over n in the spin z in this state defines is minus one. So the limit, if that goes to infinity, uh, is minus one. However, because it's a state, uh, I'm calling the state omega minus one. Because it's a state, the state's got to do this. It's going to assign the infinity operator to one. So even though the average spin Converges to the identity operator as that goes to infinity. The expectation values the state of omega minus assigns the average spin don't converge to the expectation value one as that goes to infinity. The state's not ultimately continuous, therefore the state's not one. So you might want to invoke normal states because uh, you think there's physical states of affairs that uh, you can't adequately represent using only states that are normal with respect to an algebra. Here's another example. These are my supreme facie examples. Uh, might not be um, so the algebra, the Algonian algebra we're going to talk about here is an abelian one, paralyzed. We're going to take it to act on uh, the Hilbert space of square and a little bit of complex value function of the interval. Of the elements of the algebra are going to correspond to measurable functions of the unit interval, and they're going to act on the Hilbert space, the square of interval function, just by multiplication. So this blue line, the value 1 across the unit interval, that's the identity operator. Take that square of interval function and multiply it and multiply by, by that function. Get that element of the space. Um, there's going to be lots of, lots of Lots of functions in this algebra, this my mind algebra, I'm calling DQ. Um, let's pay attention to uh, what turn out to be the projection operators in this my algebra. Uh, the projection operators are just characteristic functions for uh, sub, subsets of alpha. Uh, characteristic function for the subset delta is going to be a function that uh, at x, if x is an element of delta, takes the value 1, takes the value 0 outside. And working my way towards 
exhibiting a state on this algebra DQ of uh, functions on the even interval. Um, that's not. So we're going to need to take on board some facts about uh, about operators. Um, there's going to be facts about the projection operators that are the One fact um, you can persuade yourself of this by thinking about how the different things I'm talking about act on arbitrary square interval functions. One fact is if the subsets of the unit interval delta and gamma differ by a set of measure zero, then the projection operator the characteristic functions associated with them are the same. So these characteristic functions and characteristic functions for some sets of the unit interval uh, of the measure, the different uh, of the measure zero. Now, a non-normal state on this uh, algebra DQ. Uh, here I'm following here I'm following a uh, very, very nice article by Hans Halverson. Uh, uh, continuous physical quantities of uh, the uh, um, So I'm going to call the state the non normal state. I'm trying to make it seem like not normal. I'm trying to make it seem like an interesting state anyway. Uh, omega lambda. I'm going to think of omega lambda as a state that converges to a point lambda in the unit interval. To make my life easy, I just decided the point lambda, the real number lambda. Um, I'm going to tell you some things about how uh, the state of Mabel and that acts on the projection operators. Uh, I'm going to tell you these things by way of introducing a family of subsets of the unit interval, uh, delta sub i. Delta sub 1 is the whole unit interval. Delta sub 2 is half of the unit interval centered on one half. Delta sub 3 is a quarter of the unit interval centered on one half. So, 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 so. pictures of these things. Converging. To the, to the point lambda. And here I'm telling you how the state of angle lambda acts on characteristic functions. Uh, the characteristic function for uh, set gamma is mapped to 1 by omega lambda if and only if one of the deltas, one of the intervals shrinking to the point one half in this family is contained. It's intuitively supposed to capture the idea that uh, one thing omega lambda is sure about is that. Uh, omega lambda converge, converges to lambda, starting down the road toward a uh, state of the system located with probability one at lambda. Uh, many reasons for thinking there are, there are such states. Um, now, this state of omega lambda is a normal. Here's an argument that it's not normal. Um, in terms of the projection operators for the shrinking families, let me introduce a complete orthogonal set of projection operators I'm calling EI, uh, where E sub i is going to be the difference between the i member of the family and the i plus first member of the family. Um, so E1 is going to be uh, the projection operator for the first quarter and the last quarter. So these things, the sort of differences between uh, 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 subsequent elements, uh, yeah, so the characteristic functions of this family, delta, uh, they're going to be a countable set, they're going to sum to the identity, uh, they're going to be paralyzed with vodka. Uh, and if you think about it, they're going to be such that omega lambda assigns each and every one of them to zero. Omega assigns each and every one of them to zero because in each case EI is going to be orthogonal to some projection operators and characteristic function that according to our rule for omega lambda is not the one. So here we have a situation where uh, the E sub i, where they sum the identity operator, um, omega lambda assigns each E sub i value zero, omega lambda assigns the identity operator value one, omega lambda is violated it's an exact position I can state. Uh, that's one way to think of it. You can think of uh, uh, the projection operators I'm talking about as the spectral resolution position operator. And uh, omega lambda is the thing that uh, uh, describes a system located at point lambda. So another reason you might be tempted to 
morality is you are taught what exactly. Here's a different kind of reason to flip from now on. You're all talking about quantum fuel here. Um, so there's uh, an interesting difference between the two examples of states that aren't normal. In the first example, the state omega minus on the dynamic algebra m plus. There are pure normal states on the dynamic algebra m plus. All the states in the Hilbert space h plus, all the vector states. Are pure normal states. Um, plus. By contrast, the civilian von Neumann algebra DG divides projection operators on the spectral resolution of the position. Uh, uh, this guy has no normal state structure. Uh, now the projection operators are minimal. That's, that's the technical reason. But, uh, uh, it's an algebra. Uh, has this weird feature that none of its pure states are <laughs> Algebra with that weird feature that none of their pure states are normal are endemic in quantum theory and in the quantum thermodynamic one of quantum statistical effects. So here's some ways to get algebras with this weird feature that none of their pure states are normal. Um, you run the free Klein Gordon field on Minkowski space time, you subject it to standard axioms. That's supposed to be a diamond. <laughs> but that's a, you consider a region <laughs> called non empty space like complement. Um, and it's going to follow from the axioms that the algebra, the normal algebra of observables associated with the region, is an algebra that has no pure normal states uh, in this general one system. Uh, and the thermodynamic moment of quantum system mechanics uh, is going to turn up for a wide variety of systems. Uh, the states corresponding to equilibrium states at temperatures other than zero uh, are going to generate von Neumann algebra that it with no pure normal states. Uh, so why is what's this got to do with uh, uh, or how does this underwrite the motivation to flop right now? Um, well, there are in the offing a lot of interpretations of ordinary QM ordinary quantum mechanics uh, that proceed by way, whether they think there is measurement collapse or not, they proceed by way of using pure states to encode the facts about quantum systems. The sort of most blatant version of this is uh, the ignorance interpretation of mixtures. Mixture, especially a statistical one, you think there must be some pure state in the system. But most, uh, most no collapse interpretations work the same way. You think, notwithstanding being described, if you're, say, a photo interpreter, notwithstanding being described uh, by a superposition after a measurement, Schrodinger's cat has determined values for bios uh, and uh, develop your modal interpretation in such a way that they use a pure state to encode what those values and levels are. Uh, people call these the value states, the things that encode the truth about quantum systems. They're distinct from the dynamical entity that Schrodinger involves, involves. But uh, uh, if we use pure states to encode the possible conditions of quantum systems, uh, there's certain nice consequences. For instance, uh, one of the payoffs of using pure states to encode the state of condition of quantum systems are really in is uh, you can generate uh, determinate value assignment to a billion Boolean algebras of observables that are maximum. Use pure states as value state encodings for say, in principle, you can say that. So there's existing interpretive predilections that say, in order to make sense of uh, the conditions of quantum systems we're in, we don't necessarily need collapses to pure states. We don't necessarily need the dynamical states of systems to be pure states. But we need pure states to keep track of what the truths are. Now, if you want to, uh, extend these interpretive predilections to the setting of quantum field theory of the quantum statistical mechanics. From a dynamic limit of quantum statistical mechanics, uh, you're going to run into the impediment that uh, in many, many algebras of observables of interest, there are no pure normal states. So in the face of that impediment, you're going to hold tight to the commitment to use pure states to code the condition the system is really in. You're going to need to use states that are wrong. Much more roundabout temptation to 
flat one out. Next section of the talk, what is normality? You don't know. Uh, here are some cases where we might want to uh, give up on normality, not meant to consider some reasons to the system. What might be? Uh, a set of four reasons that I'm going to talk about, two of the more that I talk about. Um, uh, so, one is just amounts of stuff. I think there's probably interesting ways to develop this kind of case for insisting on normality. I don't know what they are. I don't know how to get traction in a case like this. Just, uh, yeah. Color volatility is just, uh, just decent. Uh, and uh, there's just something that's seen about the states that violate color volatility. There's just something off about it. Observation that you can read one thinking about water. Um, that kind of auditivity is a virtue states exhibit and a sign of probabilities. Um, if you're of the camp that thinks the temptation to recognize states that aren't normal is that you need in certain circumstances states that aren't normal to do the job of value encoding pure states then the non-normal states you're countenancing aren't in the business of assigning probabilities. They're in the business of receiving probabilities. They're in the business of keeping tabs on the value states over which some Schrodinger or Bell state or whatever is defining a probability distribution. Uh, and uh, uh, one thing you might think is that uh, if you're up to non-normal states, if you want pure states as value state encoders, maybe you don't need to worry too much about the origin of probability. You're not using these things to assign probabilities. You're using them to characterize the conditions that we see. How to work with science. So this is one of the ten, uh, one of the reasons to be normal. Right? Um, here's another consideration I can imagine. Uh, it derives from considering from the quantum state preparation. What's the quantum state preparation? Understand it this way. Um, a quantum state preparation of interaction with a quantum system that has the result that subsequent interactions are in the scope of quantum probability assignments. It's something we can do to a quantum system that enables us to use the quantum statistical algorithm to make people prepare quantum state. Uh, so uh, there's, a, there's a physicist in a lab who's got a measuring device. Um, he wants to get quantum systems into condition for which Extract probabilities for the measurements that we do if we want to prepare one systems. And here's a kind of I think, uncontroversial and non weird story about what makes preparation positive. Um, preparation is pre measurement. Um, so the story is something like uh, uh, when the system measures the lab, we don't know anything about it. Um, except on the story, and it's in some wrong state. But, and, but before we, uh, we uh, subject it to a and measuring device, uh, we subject it to a preparation interaction. We would like to restore girl at that at this field's inhomogeneous in this direction. Uh, and uh, if it emerges from that pre-measurement interaction uh, in the up trajectory, we obtain the outcome of the pre-measurement spin up, then we're authorized to do something like Bluter's conditional law. Whatever state it was in before the pre measurement interaction, subsequent interactions are going to be in the scope of the condition that we got the outcome of the direction of the inequality. So, the leaders conditionalize on the outcome we got. And then, uh, it's a happy fact uh, that when we leaders conditionalize on the projection operator session, the outcome spins you up, no matter what the normal state of the system was before the preparation interaction, it's going to be. The state encoded by that very projection operator after the preparation of the action. Um, don't forget about the job we did there. Uh, so that's our story about preparation. Uh, we managed to prepare things because we can apply Luder's conditionalization, and uh, there's uh, uh, states such that. Okay, I'm going to call the projection.
detection operator in a monomic algebra, the called piece of bot, then call it a witness for uh, that should be a state omega on um, the monomic algebra. Just in case for any normal state omega on that monomic algebra that assigns the way you want to be a the state is witness I'm looking for and the value different from zero. Uh, when you lose conditionalize an arbitrary state on um, the witness, you get the state of the witness. Uh, the projection operator wants to work. A bias that is spin z is a witness for the bias that is spin z because no matter what normal state you lose conditional lines uh, on that projection operator, that outcome you get. Plus. So the story of preparation is uh, the story that involves inverse conditionalization and the presence and the bottom line algebra that we're talking about for these things I'm calling witnesses. My physicists is going to play to summarize how to prepare state phi on a monomial algebra. And uh, she measures a uh, uh, predicate operator that the witness for phi. If she obtains the outcome one, she's allowed to lose conditionalize and the result, no matter what this normal state of the system was before measurement. Template would not be appropriate. Now, why be normal? Why be normal is recognizing non-normal states as well as normal states it throws a wrench in the works of this strategy for the common operation. So here, it's all the facts. Um, if omega, say omega, I don't know enough is normal, and we consider it some projection operator uh, on that one regular algebra, then uh, omega conditionalized, Luter's conditionalized on that projection operator is going to be normal too. Uh, it tells us that the state psi and the other algebra isn't normal, and you lose conditionalize on uh, uh, some element of the other algebra. The result isn't going to be normal. This is because normal states are always called a full layer, not a full layer, it's a full layer, it's a full It has to be specialization. So this means, what this means is, if we think there's both normal and non-normal states that are possible states of our system, we can't adapt this account of preparation to make sense of preparation of any state. There's nothing that's going to be a witness for any state. Uh, if there's both normal and non-normal states. There's nothing if you have normal states that will enable you to prepare non-normal states and vice versa. The equation of the order Further complication and detractors is motivation of deriving from the ubiquity and quantum field theory of monomial algebras that admit no pure normal states. Uh, uh, the only normal states that have witnesses at all are pure. So the kind of account of preparation I was just sketching just can't be adapted to account for the preparation of states on uh, monomial algebras that don't admit pure normal states because you can only Another reason to be normal sometimes enables for those monomial algebras that have witnesses for states and account for the state preparation. Here's a brief reason. Um, but let's, uh, this is written up there, but let me say it. Um, the impediments to telling credible stories about state preparation of non-normal states might reinforce one of the lessons of, uh, of uh, the first concern about normality, almost it's on kind of attitude, uh, uh, insofar as it isn't easy to see how to tell a story about how to compare states and compare normal states as well, and not normal states as dynamic possibilities. Uh, uh, the lesson is non normal states are hard to make sense of as sort of predictive instrumentalities, things we compare. Conditions of things before we compare um, But that doesn't impugn the capacity of non normal states to play the value state encoding role. That's the motivation for uh, companies of non normality in the case of um, So the next two considerations I'm going to go through are meant to impugn uh, the capacity of normal states to play the role of fact encoding, to play the role of keeping track of what's true. Sorry. Non-normal states play the role of fact. 
track question. Um, so, uh, why be normal? For the sake of, uh, what I'll call it, ability. Um, in the case of these von Neumann algebras that emit no pure normal states, we know that they emit pure states. But the way we know the unit pure states isn't that we build these pure states, isn't that we construct these pure states, isn't that we say uh, each projection operator and a maximal ability of some algebra, uh, how these pure states act on that projection operator. Um, we know that there's pure states on these, these weird non-modern algebras uh, by a non-constructive algebra. There's something called the ultra-filter extension theorem, and you show the ultra-filter extension theorem, that story I told you about how Omega lambda acts on the uh, characteristic function. The filter, filter extension there will tell you that the omega lambda I described can be extended to a pure state. Um, so that puts us in the pickle uh, because uh, the non normal pure states on these weird uh, algebras that have no normal pure states. Because uh, our handle on them is kind of not constructive. Uh, um, they're not forthcoming. So, on this story, the reason we're resorting to non normal states is to tell us what the world is like. But uh, uh, we can prove upsetting facts like one Hans proved that, uh, uh, that pure state of made a land I introduced. That wasn't just one pure state, there's kind of many distinct pure states that can keep it all. So uh, the things I do know about the abnormal pure states I'm like invoking as my value states don't fix all the facts I think are facts that we have about uh, uh, the system I care about. You might get disappointed by that, especially when you contrast the reticence of uh, these non-constructible pure non-normal states with uh, nice pure states and these quantum system mechanics that tell you for anything you think is an observable what it's an argument. Tells me you know, you know what value states being encoded by this pure state in the case of uh, uh, maybe um, Let's see Rob Clifton's 2000 paper where uh, describes a project of interpreting quantum field theory that gives up on maximality, gives up on the states, value states to tell you everything in principle to be said for the sake of equity, for the sake of being. Why be normal? Uh, well, it's not clear normal states are anymore. Uh, the other violence to norms and practice done by resorting to uh, non-normal states isn't uh, justified by the explicitness of, of non-normal pure states. Here's a, in a way, I think the most interesting reason to be normal. It's better to be with instantiation and necessity. Um, but back to the idea that the business of physics and the business of intermediate forms. Um, notice that in physics there's lots of important relations between observable magnitudes. Which relations involve, presuppose, rely on, the existence of limits rely on the kind of um, so, and, uh, uh, so here are some, some ways, some, some relations in physics that are relations in physics that rely on the existence of limits. New single time interpretation of Aristotle physics. Aristotle always starts stuff up by telling you what he's going to talk about, what he's not going to talk about in physics. He's going to talk about natural things. What are natural things that they think of natures? What are natures? The principles of change and stability. So, um, the obvious difference between natural things, the things he's interested in physical things, and things that are not natural, is that each of the natural ones contains within itself a source of change and stability. Uh, let's suppose he needs a hammer time. Um, one way, uh, one way there's a kind of weaving of, 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 of magnitudes in physics that involves limits is uh, you've got some ferromagnet. You're interested in the Hamiltonian for the whole ferromagnet. It's a thermodynamic limit company that occupies an infinite volume. Um, you might build it as follows. You might start by considering a finite region of the ferromagnet. Describe the Hamiltonian finite region and take the limit as uh, the volume considering those two. The total Hamiltonian for the system, the principle of change that renders it something of the nature of something physical, uh, its existence depends on the existence of the um, There's interweaving of 
magnitudes involving limits, there's a definition. Same sort of example. I want to introduce sort of global polarization. Uh, um, I think it's cool. Uh, global polarization, uh, the definition of it uh, in terms of other magnitudes, the definition mediated by, by, by the existence of the limit. Um, there's what I'll call axiomatic interweaving of magnitudes. Um, so the spectrum condition and the uh, axiomatic approach is the quantum field theory on the Kowski space time. It says something like, you got unitary groups of limited space time translations. These unitary groups are continuous. Uh, there's the Stone's theory, we know they have infinitesimal generators. The spectrum condition says something about the spectrum, uh, where the heading lies, and the infinitesimal generators. Uh, um, spectrum condition. The axiom, the axiomatic approaches in quantum field theory presupposes having a continuity of now this mutual properties. Um, and uh, a non intermediate of magnitudes. Uh, and here's one way to express Schrodinger's law. Uh, uh, the family of time evolution operators, one form or another of the group. It's a continuous number, um, and it's infinitesimal generator. The definition of Hamiltonian is kind of both. Uh, and the expression of these, these laws, this law of physics, uh, presupposes the question of Hamiltonian. So, question. Um, given that sometimes when we do physics, we interweave physical magnitudes in ways that presuppose or involve the taking of limits of positive or continuity, um, what is the first state to instantiate? There's a law-like relationship that involves a limit. What it is for a state to instantiate it is to be such that under the action of the state, the action that converges its mirror, the limiting relation is mirror the action. So Schrodinger's law is instantiated by a state, and uh, the image under the state of the family of unitary operators. That's how the law set that So, yet another reason to be normal. Um, why be normal? Non normal states can fail the extension of law of the four states. So, or have you seen that this state, uh, omega minus, I mean, it's been shamed, uh, fails to instantiate the sort of conceptual relationship defining. The global polarization as a limit of finite and average of the things that's um, even worse. We could imagine states on the infinite scale chain, scale chain, where it's not just that um, the global magnetization gets mapped to something a number different from the limit of what the finite uh, and the magnetization gets mapped to. There are states for which the limit doesn't exist. Global magnetization isn't just obeying its own point of fact. It's pretty good said if you want global magnetization to be involved in interesting laws that are instantiated by the states. Um, sometimes, insofar as these have been valued averages, like in the field models, are part of the Hamiltonian. This kind of breakdown of limiting relationships that are possible for non normal states entails a breakdown of uh, the kind of existence of the Hamiltonian. Um, here's an example. Back in terms of the state omega lambda that converges point uh, omega of uh, a non-normal state that frustrates the failed to get instance of Schrodinger's law understood. So we're thinking of an evolution operator that just translates that. It translates from farther to longer. Um, uh, Schrodinger's law um, uh, says uh, the operators form a continuous family with kind of limits of self edging generators. Uh, uh, the state omega lambda we talked about before fails to instantiate this law. Wow, here's a quick and dirty argument. If you translate the state omega lambda by T by the revolution operator, you just get a state uh, just that and now we're not living on the way far. The state uh, omega, like lambda translated by T. Um, 
the way these states are defined, um, if t is different from zero, uh, omega lambda and omega lambda is zero to be orthogonal. Uh, and what that means is uh, uh, the image of the uh, unitary vector u of t under omega lambda uh, is going to have a discontinuous jump from t equals zero to zero to t. So under the action of the state, these things are going to come into use now. That if what it takes to be an instance of Schrodinger's laws to be um, uh, such that the sort of continuity is presupposed by Schrodinger's law and uh, respected by the expectation value of this uh, system is out of So, um, um, I think these kind of considerations I've been talking about um, to suggest that if you can figure out your von Neumann algebra is, um, then maybe there's pretty good reasons to restrict attention to normal states, reasons having to apply the next state population. Um, wanting uh, the states you take to be physical, to be instances of the laws, you know, the uh, conceptual correlations you take to be important. Um, so suppose that we have the reasons to focus in on uh, these are my okay reasons to um, demand normality. Um, but then the question becomes, do we have the reasons to focus in on a non Um uh, I think the answer is it depends. Uh, and so, ironically, an argument of the sort that I just gave for restricting physically admissible states to normal ones because relations we care about between the normals are well behaved under that restriction. Um, I first encountered it uh, in a paper by Siegel from the 50s where he used it to argue for the opposite conclusion. It's an argument that argue for the opposite conclusion. Um, uh, the reason to resist taking weak limits as significant is uh, if you have a really broad set of states, uh, uh, kinds of uh, constituent patterns of definition that obtain between observables uh, are disappointed in some of those states that can take uh, observables and that are weak ones and other observables that can take um, So simply noticing uh, that there's nice ways the set of states you entertain, the set of magazines you entertain, cooperate with each other, is a set of the question of which magazines you entertain, which states you entertain. Uh, um, and, uh, uh, so we can't decide which states are physical in isolation, considering what law-like relations we care about, what magnitudes those relationships we invoke. And uh, I would also be a bit more radical and say decisions about what law-like relationships we care about, what magnitudes those relationships we invoke, uh, we're probably going to make them in different ways under different applications of the theories. Uh, we're trying to model different phenomena. Uh, uh, if we're thinking of a theory or something, we're building other theories. So we have some examples. Uh, story revolution uh, insistence that uh, uh, there's this particular recipe for generating a unitary family of unitary operators that have evolution operators. It seems pretty good, but in quantum field theory and curve space time, um, there's dynamical maps that have a claim to be dynamical as a collection of observables that aren't unitarily dynamic. Uh, it might make sense that the dynamicism of those maps that depend on the unitary. Uh, Likewise, uh, uh, there's states in the uh, Minkowski space time that don't have all the nice symmetry property you would not otherwise expect, but nevertheless have physical action, which would be the kinds of lots of other reasons. Um, uh, exactly the one kind of answer that show up. Um, some illustrations of the way different ways, different things we might do with a theory might pull us in different directions you know, as far as ruling about Observables we care about, yeah. sets of relations between those observables line to the wall. Um, there's an you know, black hole. Um, the condition of state has to satisfy to the sign, this was energy is the expectation value. And so, for us to support the project is not a classical quantum gravity, and that's a different relation to the stress energy as a whole, and the expectation value. Um, is the condition violated by a state? Some people think it makes the most sense of what the exterior of a black hole was. And making sense of the exterior of a black hole looks like it's another uh, project in the service of developing quantum gravity. Uh, so even 
sharing the cognitive aim of developing cognitive development, quantum rather different physicists might rule different ways in some other spaces. So that's my little bit of the background. Okay. Yes. The nature and desirability of normality. Uh, 
Um, that's for but, invitation. Right, right. Um, take it up. So, so uh, take it up the invitation. Uh, I'm suggesting um, that uh, you describe physical reasons. Uh, that what are uh, uh, the reasons there's this phenomenon that you need the state extension to explain? Uh, there's this extension of the theory, you need the state model in this state description um, to support. Um, and uh, I believe that a symptom of uh, that set of things not picking out uh, a collection of states that are just physical in a sense that uh, severs the like, physicality of our it's, um, I think for theories like this, those sorts of considerations don't always hold the same way. Um, so even understanding, you know, just the loss of physical, but even understanding um, what's physical as states of a quantum field on curved space time that will help us prosecute the project of developing quantum gravity. There's ways to interpret physical so that that state isn't physical because it frustrates the side of expectation of the tensor. And that state is physical because the house makes sense of the graph of that version. So the, the accolade of physical you want to use. I, well, I, the first question is thinking things we can measure, but they come out differently. So it seemed like a kind of boring thing. Like, like there were normal states, you know, commitments would just come out differently. So are any of the cases like that sort of thing? Does it seem the things we take as being well, problematic and measurable, but they sort of turn out to be the same? Observable values in both cases. Um, so the therapy.
pattern for various statutes about all physical states, legislates and restricted physical states to states um, for which form of prohibition would be formed. But uh, um, I can't, because I'm talking about fair on that, think of um, cases or different questions you might ask about fair on that and legislate and take a different set of states to be physical. Uh, but I think there, there's examples where about the same system different questions arise such that the kind of law regulations you want to invoke to answer those questions in order to be understood as law regulations require different sets of states to um, instance those laws. And the quick question is slightly lost. Quick question. Um, the particular example you gave where you've got a uh, diamond in that zero state. Does that still contribute to your growth if you make the best place by um, it depends on how we define it. So I, I think the important feature is that the thing has gotten nine FECs left out of the time. But even though it had, say, a, um, a closed unit or something, still this issue. Right. Um, I mean, what do you have the thoughts about infinity to me and confirm magnetic cases? I mean, on, uh, it doesn't like them to say that the actual fair magnet situation is uh, real fair magnet is a final argument. Infinity is a big approximation. Uh, and maybe, then, then I think. Um, in that situation, of seven gigs, where you could start to get into pragmatic or more than that, so it's the first thing you can hold that conclusion. I mean, uh, I guess that's a more interesting case would be where I've got a bit of a thing that I've genuinely got an input system. Um, I mean, say, take out a symmetry breaking, or if you do think you've got uh, a positive risk of symmetry, we do have tendencies to be aggressive. I mean, I'm trying to think, on, on what hand there, it feels as if imposing kind of long-term convergence criteria on 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 that data there I mean it kind of feels unmotivated and it was presumably the you know it really is infinite then can look at how three hundred and eighty seven years from now from the other you know, somewhere where the direction of how some great that's pretty uninteresting to have over here or can to have ten for three hundred and eighty seven information. And on the other on the other hand, um worries about kind of global globally defined Circles don't seem quite so worried about because the reason why I'm worried about, say, an open organization for a fair record is actually the, the real system I'm not saying about. I can really do things with that, but I'm not as the direction of the cows that you make in Japan, and it's in my ears from the end, it doesn't have a lot of practical consequences. Um, I don't have a position to be it on how all this goes to know what to do. So, and this is exactly why we were standing in the line of interrogation yesterday about whether in the case of symmetry breaking in the real quantum field theory, or something that stands to the uh, Higgs mechanism as polarization stands for the parallel magnet. Um, uh, that's one way to, to people always say the parallel magnet is finite, uh, is finite. Uh, um, one way to preserve the kinds of lessons you might want to drop with parallel magnet. physical differences between yeah. um, But I, I have another, I mean, it's not a knockdown drag out reply to the, my cup of coffee is finite, but um, the giant who aggressively pursues the argument that uh, um, the thermodynamic limits are incompatible with atomism. We know there's finitely many atoms in your cup of coffee, and if your cup of coffee steams, um, uh, the account of the steaming, the phase transition offered by the thermodynamic limit says uh, your cup of coffee is a good value to many subsystems, uh, uh, therefore it's a system of atoms. Um, and who's an atom is uh, trying to meet the objection on its own terms, uh, uh, one strategy is who says atom is not a priority? Um, uh, we, haven't, we haven't got like the final theory of the cup of coffee yet. And it might be, it might not be atomistic. Um, the creatures might not have gotten it right. Um, and it might be that whatever the final theory of the cup of coffee is, um, <coughs> treating the cup of coffee as a thermodynamic limit is going to uh, have features that can carry over. Um, so to, to declare that the thermodynamic is an idealization is to make a guess about the final theory of the cup of coffee. 
guess that the final theory would have a plot that features the thermodynamic limit exhibits a virtue of the limit of many days of the present. And that's just a guess. I worry that you start getting into a situation where too much of physics is being placed over to that kind of theory. I mean, I, I can't kind of see the piece of the same as going on this theory as that one is integrating you from field theory um, to uh, a people who want to do whatever they think we should do that because it is a bit associated with doing that concentration. We, we kind of, the kind of consensus among physicists would probably understand the physics of the coffee as well. It would be a bit worrying if, 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 if that would be so, so exposed to. So I want to talk about the Halverson states uh, that you talk about the converge to a yeah. So are those um, uh, the uh, states that he talks about in his later studies paper that are in a sharp position and they're not going to be a quantum operator? Uh, um, so the states, <coughs> those states live in a non separable Hilbert space. Right. Um, uh, so those states are uh, states on uh, a representation of the uh, uh, bowel relations that isn't continuous. Um, uh, I believe those states are the states I'm talking about. States on an algebra generated by a representation of all of which has continuous uh, uh, abelians on algebra. Um, this is the case where I'm talking about the um, uh, But I believe that the states I'm talking about uh, restricted to the biological agree with the states that have the bodies and the lines of the Right, good. So, I mean, so there's a case to be made that they're just the versions of those states in the particular representation that you're talking about. Yeah, so one trick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, what I wanted to, to point out then is, um, you know, if you look at those states in non office quantum mechanics, you think, well, there's very little physical motivation to think that we should have anything to do with these states because who cares about having a sharp position? Uh, doing quantum theory and presumably we're not Bohmians or else we could do Bohmian mechanics and so uh, you know why do we want to stay in a sharp position but I was going to say if you, if you, if you take that to a, a theory of something like electromagnetism all of a sudden the configuration variable instead of being position is a gauge field and then the momentum variable or you know function momentum variable is a constraint and uh, you want it to be the case that the constraint vanishes for all the gauge invariant states, and therefore, you know, the gauge invariant states had better be eigenstates of the constraint. And so, you know, you're going to get states that look a lot like those that are sort of um, sharply peaked states of the constraint. So, so they're going to be like the momentum versions of the ones that you're talking about in quantum mechanics. Good, good. Um, yeah. I, I, so, sort of a friendly comment. Right, right. I am. Um, but it's unfriendly to people who want to talk about the exact position eigenstates and right. the very bond mechanics. And I myself don't, but I defend the need. I don't think it's an interest of the It's nice to have the representation of the capacity. But at least so you can adjudicate whether you want to talk to them. Just one last question. There is, I mean, one of the things is what is the alternative to drop this thing? So I'm going to say, couldn't do this in this position. And there is an extension. Classical probability by Rennie uh, that was developed a while ago that would allow, uh, even though you, 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 you could have the, 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 the algebra that you have to think of, so that there's uh, no measure, so you, so you have, uh, you, you can think of the, the universe for the, uh, and you want to have that have measure one, or you could have, and you have the unions of it. So you have these unions of things. They're giving you the universe. And that that doesn't have to have that you can have 
so that you still have the thing well defined and loosen up that that thing. So you can't you can have non measurable and, and he, he was looking at things like uniform measures on a sphere or something, you know, there are all these measurable things that come up. And uh, it, it's a very natural extension of classical probability um, uh, where you you're not using the comic or acids, you have a general thing. And it and you get you can define you still have the relevant conditional probabilities appropriately defined. And it's very worked out very now what you want to see. So it, it, it shouldn't be just Oh, if I allow this, then I just have nothing. Should be can I mean if it turned out for one of these problems that you could set it up in a in, in a in a brand new kind of system where you have the relevant things you want to conditionalize all the agents, then why not? Yeah, so the um, the despair about separation. The despair about particular strategy for probability is the only conditional Yeah. Well worked out. Yeah. Well worked out. Yeah.